but overall, it's just, it's amazing how different my life changed. Because I never felt growing up that I was reaching my full potential in life. And I didn't know, understand why. I'm like, what, why is this, hold, something's holding me back. And I didn't know what was holding me back. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Inspired Health Journeys. I'm joined by our guest, Cindy, today. Cindy, thank you for joining us. Sure, I'm happy to be here. So Cindy, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, I'm um, 37 years old. I grew up and still live in Long Island, New York. Um, I met my husband um, while I was studying for my master's in speech language pathology and we married um, soon after and we have started a family and I have a six-year-old daughter and a four-year-old son and um, I work, currently work as a speech pathologist in a school working with school-aged children um, with various language and developmental communication disorders. Um, I love summer. I don't work in the summer, so I enjoy spending it um, with my family and my friends, and we like to go on the boat and sit by the pool. I'm kind of a water bug, so anything that has to do with water, I enjoy. Um, I take pride in my home and my, and my work, but I do love being with my family and making memories um, with them, and I'm really thankful that I do have this time to spend with them. Um, I'm also very interested in knowledge, so I'm kind of like a natural researcher. I've always, if I di didn't have any answers, I, I have to find the answers. Um, I enjoy researching, but I, I prefer fact over fiction. Um, a lot of times people are like, oh, what's the latest book you read? And I was like, it's like a book about, you know, vitamins. <laughs> it's like, I, that, that's what I enjoy. Um, I like having knowledge. Um, I also try to balance, you know, my love of food and occasional wine, um, with exercise and eating clean and being healthy. Um, when I do have time, that's what I like to focus um, on, trying to be the best version of myself and eating healthy and taking care of myself is the best way that I could do that, so. Excellent, so you haven't always been in this place that you are now health-wise. No. Tell us a little bit more about your health journey. What was you know, how did it start? What, what inspired it? And give us a little background. Sure. Well, I always, since I was a child, struggled with, you know, mild anxiety, um, a little depression here and there. When I got into my 20s, it was always manageable. Um, when I got into my 20s, it got a little bit worse. A little, I got a little more depressed, maybe not knowing which direction I was going in. Some situational, but some I just felt I couldn't shake. Um, I was uh, going to doctors and you know, they wanted to put me on all this medication for the depression and the anxiety. I really wasn't about that. So I just tried to, you know, exercise. I think that was my first um, step I took was exercise. I'm, I'm very active, but just making it a habit of going to the gym daily and taking care of myself. Um, after I had got gotten married, I was getting my blood work done and they found that my um, prolactin level was high and that's indicative of a pituitary adenoma. So I had an MRI done and they found that I had a small growth on my pituitary gland. And um, they wanted to put me on all this medication. My cortisol was high and then they did more tests, found that they, I might have Cushing's disease, which is like an adrenal, I think it's a adrenal related um, issue. And I wanted to start a family at this time. So I didn't want to take medication. They wanted to put me on all this medication. And I thought, I felt like something was wrong with me. I didn't know why I was always, you know, sad and I didn't want to be that way. I didn't want to always be anxious and I didn't want to always be, be sad. Um, and I knew that I didn't want to take medication. And my dad has always had, um, he had a small stroke when he was 59 and it kind of affected his memory for 24 hours and he was fine. And he went on this kind of holistic journey to improve his health. So we kind of went on that together and we found a whole, like a naturopath in Long Island and he, um, tested my hidden food allergies. So um, I came up sensitive in my IgG and in my IgAs um, to gluten, dairy, and eggs. So at that time, um, he said that I couldn't have that anymore. <laughs> and I cried because I was like, how can I go without eating, you know, bagels and pizza? And, um, and being in New York. Yeah, and being in New York. And um, I did it. And a month later, I, my anxiety improved tremendously and I felt happier and overall just better. 
So did it affect you more than just emotionally? Was it just depression and anxiety or did it, was it affecting your weight? Was it affecting your energy levels? Was it affecting other things or just mainly your mood? Um, it was, it was mood. I, I've never been overweight. Um, but I definitely lost like seven pounds, seven to 10 pounds just from removing those things from my diet. Um, I did have the chronic fatigue was one of my symptoms. Um, and on top of the pituitary adenoma and the fatigue, I had um, Raynard's and some psoriasis like on my scalp. And after, you know, eliminating all those hidden food allergies from my diet, like all those symptoms went away. Every one of them. Every one of them. Wow. And is it just eliminating those three things was the gluten, dairy and eggs and you didn't eliminate anything else? Um, I didn't eliminate anything else. Nope. And um, I do notice that, you know, because I'm not perfect and I will fall off here and there. And um, I notice now that if I do have a little bit of gluten, um, my, the, next, the next day or like a few days later, like I'll feel it in my joints a little bit, you know, because it's an inflammatory. So I get that inflammatory response from it. Um, but overall, it's just, it's amazing how different my life changed. Cause I never felt growing up that I was reaching my full potential in life. And I didn't know, understand why I'm like, what, why is this hold? Something's holding me back. And I didn't know what was holding me back and it was food. <laughs> and I, I, I did have food kind of ran my life cause I really did enjoy eating. I worked in restaurant business, like I food, I love food. Um, and I was kind of food ran my day. What am I going to eat? What am I going to have for breakfast? What am I going to have for dinner? And then after I eliminated all those, all of those things, it, it was like freedom. Like I felt free and it's just. Huh. So amazing. what are some of the biggest tips that you can give that allowed you to eliminate eggs, gluten, and dairy? I mean, because that's, I mean, you're pretty much eliminating any and all bread. You're eliminating yeah. pasta. You're eliminating most things, right? I right. mean, not most things, but most uh, breads or carbs mm -hmm. or that kind of thing, right? In the beginning, I did find some substitutes. So I found some good, like good gluten-free um, bread, but it was difficult because I had to find egg-free too. You know, what else did you do to replace it all? So, okay. I mean, it, because you can't have that stuff now, at early you found substitutes. What else did you do to just implement not eating those three things? So it was really kind of increasing, you know, my vegetable intake, finding healthier greens, like ancient greens, like quinoa, um, amaranth, things like that. Um, and protein, my, I, I find that my body thrives on protein. Um, I know the next step for me is kind of reducing meat products, but for now I'm kind of just, I am eating meat at the moment. Cause here's what's, here's what's interesting is there's a lot of people that are gluten sensitive right? And they need to go off that. And there's my niece, she cannot have dairy, she cannot have gluten. Um, I think those are the two main things. But it's I mean, it's, it's challenging, you have to find solutions. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think there's just a lot of people who, after they listen to this might go get tested and find out what they're sensitive to. And, and it's just gonna be great to understand what did you replace them with? Um, right. and, and do you ever have times I know you said you kind of slip here and there. But do you have you know, are there certain little rituals that you do or there little replacement things that you do that just make it a little easier so you don't feel as deprived and, and things like it, that? It takes a lot of planning, I feel like, at first. Like, I've been doing this 10 years now, um, so it's kind of easier for me. But in the beginning, you have to do a lot of meal planning, um, your shopping list, you have to get it all together because they're all gonna, new, all new ingredients that maybe people have never heard of. Um, but going back to what you had said about people might be going to get tested, when I talk to people, they're like, oh, I eliminated gluten. I didn't eat it for a week. And I was like, that's great. I was like, but it's a hidden food allergy. And sometimes that takes like 20 days or a month to get out of your system. So you really wouldn't have or see improved, you know, symptoms um, in, in a short amount of time. You kind of have to do it consistently. And inflammation affects people differently. Like I never get any digestive symptoms. It's all, it's all my brain. It all goes right into my brain. Um, you know, the bogginess, the, the fatigue, the mood. So, yeah, I think that's a really valid point because a lot of times I think we judge by how our stomach feels, mm -hmm. how our gut feels, definitely energy levels. I, I can tell if I end up having too much gluten or if I have breads or things like that, I crash hard afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that we always pay attention to the mental aspect of it and how it's affecting us emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, and all of that. Let's talk about the test. 
Um, one, do you remember what you what you paid for? Was it expensive to have well, the allergy test done? Yeah, that's another challenge because like if you go to the doctor, your your mainstream doctor, um, they're going to do your IgEs and they're not going to find like I don't come up sensitive for anything in my IgEs tests. Um, so I when I went to the naturopath here in Long Island, um, I believe it was six hundred dollars for both of them. But then you have to pay because they're not accept they don't accept insurance. So you have to pay for the visit and then you have to pay for the tests and um, I'm sure if you go, if you now, I, if I would request it at my main, if I just said I wanted to get an IgG, IgA at the mainstream, my mainstream doctor, they may do it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they, that's, and that's another challenge is the pushback from the mainstream. Cause like, why do you want that done? That, that's not going to, that's not going to tell us anything. So. Yeah. And, and I mean, it just, it reinforces the fact that we have to take ownership of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and the unfortunate part is, is not necessarily accepted by insurance. If you go to a naturopath some of the things there. I think the good news is, is 10 years later, it's likely less expensive. I, I know that there's definitely um, food allergy tests that are probably half that now um, mm -hmm. for your naturopath. I even believe there's some online that you can do um, that, that can help you. And so I think we're getting better to, for, for those of us that have to spend our own money yes. to figure it out. At, at least it's getting cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, you brought up a good point about somebody going off of gluten for a week. How long did you have to stay clean, we'll call it, mm -hmm. off of gluten, dairy, um, and what was the third one? Uh, egg. Gluten, dairy, and eggs. How long did you have to stay clean of those before you started feeling a difference? Um, probably about a month. Like, I, I, I felt better. It was a progression, so I felt better, but I didn't feel really good until about a month later. And then that's motivating. That's a motivating factor to keep up with it. You know, because people would apologize for eating in front of me. And at first, you know, it was a little difficult. But now it does not bother me. I don't crave the food because my mind just looks at it like that's that's poison for me because I'm gonna, it's going to make me feel bad. And I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to go back to that place. I want to feel good. Yeah, I think it's another thing that people don't realize is the turnover of our taste buds. I think mm -hmm. it's a two-week turnover Absolutely. on our taste buds. So you get rid of something and then... After two weeks, it's all mental. It's just yeah. you wanting to eat that yeah. cake. It doesn't mean that you necessarily need it to touch your tongue. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. absolutely an addiction. So. Um, what was your biggest obstacle along the way here? Um, probably like building a support network. I feel that um, finding the information or finding uh, a juice place that uses organic, clean vegetables and um, having people to kind of talk to about it. Uh, I, I feel like that was a challenge. Um, financial, the financial burden was a little bit of a challenge. Um, I know my husband always kind of pokes fun at me that our grocery bill is so high because I have to buy organic and it takes him 10 hours at the supermarket just to get what I need. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, and eating clean. I think eating clean is very challenging. Um, I, and I mean, you bring up a good point. I mean, it, it, it is more expensive. And, you know, um, I, I guess the, the, the second question is, is what, how much more are you able to do in life because you're not having the depression and the anxiety? How much more are you able to earn? I hate to put it that way. No, it's true. Right? Though. Because you're not struggling with that and you can be happier and, and you know, uh, pursue different goals and mm -hmm. different dreams and things like that. Right. And unfortunately, like I wish, I mean, I'm so grateful that I found out when I did, but when I was 28, um, you know, I had already pursued you know, my mass, I, I established a career and thinking back, I'm like, oh, I would have, you know, because I, I loved, I loved health and I, I was like, oh, I should have went into some kind of medicine. And, but I always was anxious and I was like, oh, I can't do that. You know, if I can't do it perfectly, I'm, I can't do it. I might fail. You know, now just learning and educating myself, like, it's okay. It's okay to fail. You're going to fail. Um, and that was a big major piece of anxiety because anxiety just tells you all the negative things that, um, you know, your mind wants to just grasp onto. So now that that's gone. I mean, I'm not going to say it's gone, you know, 100%, but it's definitely, you know, improved tremendously. And I feel that I can reach my potential now. And I, I do things that I wouldn't have done. I go places that I wouldn't have gone before. Um, I'll go out and do more social things just because I, you know, I feel happier and I'm not depressed. You know, I'm not sitting on the couch. I mean, have you come across other people that said, hey, I've suffered from depression, anxiety, and, and sharing your story has inspired them to go make a change and do I do. I have a few people that I, I don't like, to, and I try not to be pushy. I, I feel like sometimes I don't want to be, you know, oh, this is what happened. Like, I just, I give little tidbits here and there just to kind of put, like, 
point people in the right direction. I, I did refer a few people to my um, naturopath and they saw, and they saw a difference. Um, one was a friend and her, her children suffered from eczema and they went off the gluten and the dairy and it improves the eczema. So, and people that have, um, it's mostly like a lot of the people with the skin issues, they'll be like, oh, you know, I have this, I'm battling my psoriasis or my eczema. And I'm like, you know what? I was like, you really should think about going gluten-free, you know? And I was like, I'll help you. I'll, I'll put together a list or, you know, um, see them off. But uh, I, I definitely try to. Sometimes I feel like people don't really want to hear. They're like, oh, you're, you know, they'll say, oh, you, you don't eat anything. You're so thin. And I was like, I, like, I'm not trying to be thin. I'm trying to be healthy. Like, this is me being healthy. This is me being my best me, you know? And I'm like, because people, I think what people don't understand sometimes is that inflammation um, is an individual thing. It goes to, like, um, to different places and different people. For me, it went to my brain. For other people, it might go into their skin or they might have acne or might struggle with their weight. I think the inflammation, my husband has heart disease. So his inflammation goes into his, um, you know, arteries. So I think that's what people struggle to grasp. Like they, they can't grasp that concept of the inflammation affecting different areas. Um, so again, like we're getting rid of all those different foods will eliminate their inflammatory, you know, response. Uh yeah, I think that was the most profound thing you said this entire interview is, is that it inflammation affects all of us differently and in different places, right? Some of us, it's in the gut. And for you, it was in the head, you know, for arteries, different places on your skin. Um, and I think that we always quickly go to find the cream at the drugstore that we can rub on our skin, right? Where we go take the the medicine or drink some caffeine to help give us an upper. Yeah. We, we do all of these things rather than just let's back up a little bit and see, is there something causing the inflammation? Right. Let's quit trying to treat the symptom mm -hmm. and, and look back at the cause. And so I think that was brilliant. And, and I've never even thought about it that way um, until you just said it. So thank you for sharing that. Um, let's wrap this up. I want to ask you, what are the three health tips you'd like to share with the listeners? To help inspire them what are the three top things you could tell them um i think that being your own health advocate is very important um doing your own research for me knowing my genetic makeup i know that i suffer uh, my family has a long line of cancer so i try to you know make sure that certain vitamin levels are maintained and higher so i can you know prevent my inflammation i mean cancer what is a cancer it's an inflammation you know and I try to reduce the inflammation so hopefully I can prevent some of those, you know, cancers. And um, so I think definitely being an advocate and knowing your body, listening to your body, if something's wrong, you want to find out again, the root cause of what's wrong. Don't cover it up. You want to fix it. You want to figure out what's causing that problem. Um, I think um, for me, self-care is important. Sometimes I struggle with, you know, uh, um, like the mind and, body balance. Like I'll, I'll, I'll exercise every day, but I'm not really taking care of my emotional state or, you know, being a mom and working. Like sometimes it just, you get so busy in the hustle and bustle. And you just have to remember that, you know, you need five minutes just to recoup, you know, plan those meals for the next day or take a breath. Don't forget to breathe, you know, so things like that. Um, and then also living healthy is kind of, it's, it's a lifestyle change. It's not a fad. It's not something you can just jump into and jump out of. It's, it's, you change your life. It's, it's a lifestyle change. You have to adopt, you have to believe in it, you know, and that will, you know, pursue that and help you move forward. I think, I think it's amazing advice. Um, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I think that, I think one of the biggest things is people are looking to make change is do it long enough to feel a difference. That's exactly what one, Yeah. Once you feel that difference, it makes it a lot easier to keep going. Yep. Right. Once you, once you drop five, excuse me, once you drop five pounds or once you notice that your head is more clear, that you yeah. woke up not groggy and, and, you know, we're able to go 12 hours straight without an app, whatever it is, mm -hmm. Feed off of that and then do the next little thing and the next little thing. And I think everybody wants to tackle everything at once and they expect results tomorrow because yeah. we can pick up our phone and FaceTime our best friend in two seconds. We can mm -hmm. call and order pizza. Like everything's instant. Right. It's, it's a gratification. Yeah. 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 
So I, I definitely agree with that. And that's, it comes back to, again, like finding that support system, find that support system, find that one friend that's going to, you know, go get juices with you at six o'clock in the morning or go to the gym or, you know, cook with you on the weekends. Like that support system is so important. I, I agree with that too. I think, and understand that your support system may not be in person, right? Mm -hmm. And especially if you're suffering from depression, anxiety, things like that, you may not have a lot of people around. Right. There's a lot of support systems online. You can get on proper Facebook groups. You could follow the right people on Instagram, mm -hmm. right? You could do different things. I highly suggest you get away from the circles that yeah. drag you down. Stay away yeah. from the friends yeah. that want you to go out and drink beer with them mm -hmm. and eat pizza and you'll be fine. You're skinny. Right. You don't understand what's going on in your head and your heart. So just leave them be for six months, you know, get your stuff together and then you can hang back out with them. And it definitely changes your way of thinking again. And you, you start seeking out those more positive, you know, influences. Like, again, I changed my, I don't, I'm not a big social media um, person, but on my Instagram, I don't follow people. I follow inspirational sites, you know, certain, you know, things that just inspire me, like you guys and just creating that online presence, network, feeling of support. Yep. I agree hundred percent. Cindy, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to share. I can imagine you've helped a lot of people. Um, and I just, I greatly appreciate it. I know it requires a lot of courage to come out and be vulnerable and to tell your story and to share that, Hey, I haven't always been in a great place. Um, but the more that we do that, I think in life and the more that we're all more vulnerable and share, the more we're going to realize that everybody around us struggles with stuff mm -hmm. and we can all lift each other up. And so I just greatly appreciate you taking the time and, and sharing. Your story. I'm, I'm glad to do it, you know, and I just want to reiterate that. I think that is so important what you had said, like being brave, Like you have to be brave. It's not going to be easy. Life's not easy. You're going to face challenges and just remember just to be brave, be brave and, and breathe. That's really just be you know, brave just, and breathe. breathe. I yeah. like that. <laughs> We are going to end it on that note. Cindy, thank you again. Um, for those of you listening, leave your comments below. Give us a big thumbs up wherever you watch this, whether it's on YouTube or through our podcast channel. Um, and hopefully we catch you on the next episode. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Thanks so much.